distinctness means this power can be exercised when there is a issue or a matter or a subject which is distinct in itself. If it is not distinct in itself, then this power cannot be exercised by the federal power. Again, the same case. Here, there was a legislation, Federal Ocean Dumping Control Act. This Control Act prohibits the dumping at sea. So an act was passed, an act controls the, the dumping at the sea. This act was challenged and finally the Supreme Court upheld that the marine pollution was a matter of concern and this act is well within the jurisdiction and competence of the federal parliament while exercising its residuary power in the shape of peace, order and good government. Here again there was a majority and a minority view. The minority view is very important here. While, while answering a question on these issues, if you have a problem, you may discuss the minority view, you may discuss the majority view as well and give your own reasoning in support of a minority view or a majority view and give your answer. There is nothing wrong in it. You may or you may not agree with that. But you have to express it that the majority view the court has, the Supreme Court has held like this by giving this reasoning. The minority view headed by so and so judge has taken this view by giving this reasoning and in my considered view or if you have an article or a jurisprudential or a jurist view, you may support with that. So here, while discussing the minority view, the minority view says that this marine law is not distinct in itself. So if it is not distinct in itself, then the inability of provincial legislation principle is not applicable and the provinces have the competence to legislate on this aspect. But this is not accepted being a minority view. Then there is an anti-inflammation, oh sorry, anti-inflation reference, anti-inflation reference in 1976. This reference was pertaining to wage and price control. Now this law was made pertaining to wage and price control. The co it, this act was challenged and the federal parliament on the behalf of federal parliament the justification for enactment of this legislation was that this power has been taken by the parliament through peace, order and good government, residuary power. But the court has finally held that it is neither in national interest nor having any filling in the gap, filling in the gap or in case of an urgency, emergency or urgency because this pertains to basically the issues or the matters which the provincial legislatures have already the power to legislate. So the parliament cannot exercise this residuary power in legislating this particular enactment and finally the Supreme Court has stuck down this legislation by holding that unity that makes it indivisible. Sorry, this is only regarding national uh, inability clause. So finally the court has held that this, this particular enactment is beyond the competence and jurisdiction of the federal parliament and stuck down this legislation. Then there is another part of the distribution of power that is the next part that is criminal law. Now again before moving with the chapter or the particular part of uh, the distribution of power pertaining to criminal law, we must understand what is the criminal law and its governance in India. CRPC is there, IPC is there. What is the character and nature of IPC? It is Indian Penal Code that is a substantive law. CRPC is predominantly a procedural law, predominant. Then Indian Evidence Act 
again predominantly a procedural law who has enacted these legislations in india the parliament now the courts are established in india under the constitution now the indian courts the supreme court the high court and the district courts have been established by which law the state law or the parliamentary law is there anybody who can answer this i think you must have followed my question my question is in india i'm not talking about canada in india the courts have been established under the parliamentary law or the state laws please come forward give the answer central law sir okay. yes please introduce yourself give your yes yes please now on separate sir central law of uh, all laws uh, passed by the parliament sir my only precise question is regarding the establishment of courts you you may be right also but it it may be a central law under which particular law the courts have been established yes are likely to be the completing your graduation this is the basic question yes anybody else please come forward that is a different body huh it's not covered by parliament as a uh, central level or state government okay. it is an independent part independent part of the constitution okay so it is not made by parliament or the state government. so the courts have not been established by any statutory legislation but by the constitution this is what you yes, want sir. to say yes it is part of the constitution okay yes anybody else yes please is there any provision under the criminal procedure code or a civil procedure code for the establishment of courts these are the magna cartas of criminal and civil law in india yes sir section 12 13 and 14 establishment of special courts session courts cgm courts yes and that too is established that the state has granted the power to establish the courts perfect and that is under the crpc perfect so uh, and as far as the gentleman has said about the high court and honorable supreme court yes. they are they have been It is under the constitution as the constitution was uh, of India as yes. it is. Uh, it has been laid. It is clearly specified there. Okay. But the power to hold the criminal courts and file and uh, sign it to special courts, yes. special CBI courts, special yes. judges, yes. CGM courts, the judicial yes. ministers of chapter of section 12, 30, 14 onwards they have been specified under section 12 of the 14th criminal procedure court. Criminal procedure court. Please sir. so the fountain of the establishment of court of law is the constitution right in the constitution three levels of establishment of courts have been provided one is supreme court of india high courts and district courts then you are right in saying under the crpc the courts have been established by way of a further legislation right but whether this canadian legal system has adopted the same principles or not in the establishment of criminal courts the criminal law 
as such is the matter listed under section 91. Section 91 says, 9127, Federal Parliament to make laws in relation to criminal law. Now, an exception has been carved out, out of it. That exception is constitution of courts of criminal jurisdiction, but it includes the power to make law regarding the procedure in criminal matters. So, meaning thereby, under section 91, subsection 27 of the Constitution Act 1867, it clearly provides that the federal parliament has the authority to make laws in related, relation to criminal law, but the exception carved out is the constitution of courts of criminal jurisdiction. So, establishment of courts falls within the legislative competence of provinces. And procedural part, again the law of providing procedures which are likely to be governed for prosecution, investigation and trial is vested with the provinces, oh sorry, with the federal parliament. They, what is, what is criminal law? before going further, what is criminal law? In, in India, we, we understood the basic concept of criminal law, the administration of justice is, it is an act against the society. It is an act against the society. Exactly on the same jurisprudential aspect, they say the establishment of criminal law, the criminal law ultimately serves the public purpose. It maintains the decency, morality in the society. Now, criminal courts, so we, we, we can understand this criminal law in regard to, in regard to distribution of power in three parts. One is a criminal courts, another is a procedure to be followed by the criminal courts, right? Now, Criminal courts are to be established by the provincial law. The procedure to be governed in the criminal courts is to be provided by the federal law. And in 1892, there was a criminal court, which was the federal, which has the federal origination. So meaning thereby, the investigation, prosecution, charge, trial, and the establishment of courts for that purpose. The policing power is a provincial power. The prosecution power is a provincial power. The establishment of court, criminal courts, is within the competence of the provincial legislature. But providing the, or we can say, a declaring a particular act as an offense is a law provided by the criminal court that is of a federal in character. Procedure governing the criminal courts is to be provided by the federal parliament that is it is within the competence of the federal parliament. Now this is a, another aspect that is correctional institutions. Under section 9128 federal parliament has the jurisdiction to maintain the prisons and governs them if it pertains to the offenders who have been sentenced to imprisonment for two years or more. So the prisons and the prison law is to be made by the federal parliament if it pertains to the offenders who have been sentenced to imprisonment for two years or but if it is less than two years, then the provincial legislature is competent to make the laws to govern the prisons. Now, criminal code is enforced by whom? Criminal code, code is enforced by whom? Criminal code is obviously enforced by the 
either the prosecution or the policing power or the criminal courts. So this is all done by the provinces. So by the provinces. So decision to investigate, framing of charge, prosecute of offense, these are all falling within the jurisdiction and competence of the provincial legislature to make the laws governing all these things. There is a reason for that because we are discussing about the criminal law. There was a demand that the acts to be declared as an offense should be based on a local condition and local policy. Because one act may be treated as a criminal act in one particular part of the land, it may not be treated as an act, offending act in other part of the land. So there is a linguistic cultural differentiation in all the provinces. And there was an urgent demand at that point of time in, before 1892 that the act to be declared as an offense, that is the criminal law, it should be within the province, uh, within the purview of the provincial legislature on the justification of local policy and local conditions. But finally it was not accepted. The criminal code was established in 1892. The power of making criminal law and the procedure still vests with the federal parliament, the central body. But rest of the part which we have discussed falls within the provinces to justify that they can establish the and hold the investigation and uh, the trials as per the local policy and the condition. Then the next part is 92-14. The provincial legislature has the competence to make laws for the administration of justice in the province. Again, I am repeating it for the constitution of provincial courts, maintenance of the provincial courts, organization of the criminal courts, and even the civil courts. The provincial legislature is competent to legislate all these issues and further explaining, explaining it only, constitution, maintenance, organization, this all falls within the jurisdiction of the provincial legislature. Now 1914, it authorizes provincial policing, again I am repeating it, provincial policing, provincial prosecution of the offenses which have been prescribed under the Central Criminal Code, then 9127, procedure of and evidence. It is within the purview of federal parliament. Procedure and evidence under 9127, the federal parliament is competent. Rest we have already discussed for these matters, the provincial legislature is competent. Now under 1915, it, it again authorized the provincial legislature to make law. What for? They can specifically law, make the law. Here, if it is a punishment is a offense, a fine, punishment is a penalty or imprisonment made in relation to matters subject of section 92. So an exception we can say a law can be made by the provincial legislature where the punishment is fine so offense can be so within the criminal law a provincial legislature may declare a particular act as an offense but the punishment shall be fine, penalty, or it, this imprisonment this is important is that it only pertains to the subjects on which the provincial legislature under section 92 is competent to legislate. So violating say uh, insurance law, contractual obligation, some fine, some penalty is, may be imposed, then this is within the competence of the provincial legislature. Now the next is, we have already discussed, the purpose of criminal law is the public purpose, it, it, it attains public peace, it attains order, it attains security, it attains health and morality. So again, it serves the public purpose, it serves the social purpose, that's why 
it is considered as an act against the state and that's why the state is prosecuting it. So this is all about uh, these two parts. Third and the last part is trade and commerce. 